Welcome back to my art studio. So today I want to share with you a little bit of my artistic process and there's going to be a slightly sped up time lapse in the background here in a moment, but essentially what I'm going to be sharing with you is how I incorporate what is already in an older painting with some new layers of paint in order to give a fresh start to some pieces that need to come back into the current series of work. And for whatever reason, whether they were experiments or they were the last ones left of a previous series, they just had been sitting around for a little bit. And through this process that allows me to react, it was all already there and try to figure out how to incorporate that as well as the current themes and color palettes and different motifs that I'm currently using in my work and how can I bring them together um, to give a new breath of life, so to speak, to these paintings. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and dig in. So let's start with a quick view, uh, showing you some of my existing work. And then the ones on the easel are the ones that we're going to transform throughout this painting. Um, there are time lapses, they're slightly sped up so that you can still see what I'm doing, but not real time because that would take hours upon hours and it is time for that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the two that are on the easel, um, the one on the left is from a few years back and it shows a little bit of what my work incorporated with the hard edges. The one on the right, it's more of the colors of it. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. You know, they did get finished and titled and everything. It's more of a, they don't fit with the rest of the work that I have. Um, either their siblings all found new homes or they were experimental in some way. So what I did is I did these miniature uh, painting studies. You can see them above the paintings to kind of give me some inspiration as to what I want to combine in these paintings. So here we go ahead and, and get started. Um, I'm going to jump in here and there throughout the video just to add a few notes on, you know, fun things that happened. Um, or little bloopers <laughs> during the painting process. But for the most part, I want this to be kind of a relaxed video, some nice music in the background. And um, yeah, you'll, you'll get to see how these come to life. as I go through the process is that when I'm using a specific color on one canvas, you'll see me jump to the one next to it. And it might seem like it's exactly the same color. It's not. I usually will mix on the palette and change it ever so slightly, but it's basically a way to be, uh, I don't know if efficiency is the right word, but essentially if I'm already mixing the shade and I know that there's going to be a similar one um, on the one next to it, then you know, why not, right? Take advantage of that. But um, other thing I wanted to mention about that is the video on, or I should say the painting process for the painting on the left is slightly less sped up. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. The one on the right, since it's a little bit farther and I couldn't get the camera to focus on it, then that one's even more sped up. But you'll see them as I work on them side by side. It's also part of the challenge too, and one that I really enjoy. Being that they're different formats, one's a square and one's a rectangle, um, it forces my like my creativity, my imagination, my brain, if you will, um, to kind of troubleshoot what would the shapes look like. Now, I did those tiny sketches. They were both squares. They're also very small. Um, and I also wanted to be able to react to what's on the surface, not just you know, straight up cover it without considering what's already there. So it was definitely a challenge to try to figure out like, okay, how do I do this in a way that still makes sense to me and still respects what was already there and incorporates those textures and some of those feelings and some of the, the themes that were already in the paintings themselves. And then, you know, like I said, just brings them on to the current series. But yeah, you'll see me jumping around between those two. So hope that makes sense. <laughs>
whoops, so that color was one that looked slightly different on the palette. And once it went onto the canvas, it just wasn't right. So I had to wipe off the excess before remixing the color, coming in with a new one. It's hard to tell on the video. The color is slightly more of, more of a sage green, a little bit more dusty blue than green. Um, so I had to make the adjustments and that happens sometimes and it'll happen a little bit later on in the video too, where it may look fine while mixing, but the moment you have it next to another color, the way the brain will read it or eyes will read it, it'll either look more muted, more green, more blue, more, you know, uh, more saturated than um, looking at the color being mixed all by itself. So which is a normal part of the process and the way our eyes and our brain works. But uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes the adjustments need to be made, but you'll see another one later on, uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> Something else you may notice throughout the video is you'll see me flipping the canvas in different directions. There's a few reasons for this. Um, one of them has to do with the positioning of my hands and the angles that I'm trying to go through because I'm doing hard edges and I'm not using rulers or tape or anything like that. I need to be able to have my hand at a not too uncomfortable of an angle <laughs> as I'm going up or down or whatever the direction may be. So to make that a little bit easier on my hand and wrist, you'll see me twist it around. And another reason too is for both myself and my collectors, for any pieces that don't have a specific representational uh, element to it or design to it, like a landscape or a botanical or something like that, um, I, I like to have the choice that once the piece is done, I can flip it around. So maybe I finished it in one orientation and I want to move it, you know, clockwise. Um, I'd like to have that choice. I also like the person taking the painting home to have that choice as well. So on some of them, you'll see me flipping them around and I'm trying to make sure those edges are nice and crisp and look good no matter which way the painting is facing. I don't know what to call that. Um, at that insistence on having that option, maybe that's a video for another day to unpack that one. <laughs> Here's the other one. So that orange felt a little too saturated for me. I wanted to tone it down just a bit. So to verify too, you'll see it in a moment. I took out my phone, put it in black and white, and was just trying to see if the contrast of the colors was still correct. Story for another day. But essentially I wanted to make sure that there's still enough pop. And it's not just the colors themselves that you're seeing, but it's actually the black and white values of those colors are correct as well. But I'm going to unpack that in another video. <laughs> Bazillion hours later, just kidding, but <laughs> many hours later, they're finally done. You can easily see how now not only are they related to each other, uh, but they're also related to some of the other paintings around them. So I am very, very pleased with the way that they turned out. And I'm going to give you a quick close up so you can see some of the textures. Some of them are from the background. Some of them are from the new layers of paint. And I think they turned out really well. I'm very happy with them. All right, I'm 
popping back in real quick to say I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm hoping to do in the near future a Q&A type video where I can address some of your questions. Uh, perhaps some of them will turn into their own video, so let me know. Um, if you like this kind of content, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified when the next video is ready. All right, until then, I'll see you in the next video.